Hello, this is going to be a little rant from me about um, seeking a perfect spouse. <laughs> I'm really kind of like agitated right now. So if you just don't even want to listen to this, if you want something sweet and cookie cutter, just turn the video off because I'm not in that mode right now. But I'm going to just jump right into it. I'm going to try to use my words or choose my words wisely. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I've had, um, I've experienced this as well. I've done it myself. So, but I have, um, I've had like conversations with us with so many different Christians, like Christian brothers, you know, in the Lord and sisters and stuff. And when it comes to the topic about marriage and seeking a godly mate or trying to find a godly mate, or they're saying that they're praying for one, um, what I used to do was I used to like make a list I used to make a list of everything that I wanted in a husband. I mean, from physical appearance to like character, personality, like how I wanted him to treat me. I used to write it all down. And um, to be honest with you, God never gave me everything <laughs> that I asked for. And it's not to say that God didn't hear me. You know, the Lord doesn't even, you don't even have to pray that. You know, God knows your heart. He searches your heart. So he knows what the desires of your heart is. Um. All in all, I think that, you know, a lot of what we want, it could be based on, um, could be based on the flesh or maybe some part of us that's still not sanctified yet. So I think that God gives us his best. I think he considers and he uses, you know, what you want, but he knows what you need better than you do. <laughs> so he gives you what he knows that you need. He gives you his best. So, um, I'll be the first to attest this. I'll be the first to say that. Like when you make a list and all of that, if God does give you the whole list, well, praise God, <laughs> you know, I mean, all glory to God for that. But um, I will be the first to say that I have experienced the disappointment when it comes to um praying for a godly spouse. And then the Lord tells me, oh, that's him. And I, I didn't like him. I already shared those stories with y'all already. But um. Yeah, I have had the Lord send me a couple guys. The first guy was as sweet, sweet as can be, honey. And that's when I was really dealing with uh, that Jezebel spirit, super, super strong. And that was exactly what I needed, a lot of love. When you're dealing with a woman who's struggling with a Jezebel spirit, and I say struggling, I put strong emphasis on struggling because they got some women who have that spirit, but everybody ain't got the same heart. You can have the same spirit be dealing with the same problem, but everybody don't have the same heart. So when I say struggling, I mean someone who's actually trying. And um, when you're dealing with a woman like that, who, you know, we're still God's daughters too. He's going to send you a husband who's extremely loving and caring because that's exactly what that woman needs to get healed. Jezebel comes through rejection nine times out of 10. It does from the <coughs> rejection spirit in a doorway. Um, spirit of rejection or just being rejected so there's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of pain there's a lot of wounds there so he has to send you somebody either that he's already cultivating to become a loving person or they're already a loving person and he's gonna use them and um what's already in their heart and he's gonna emulate himself through you to heal you as the wife okay so <laughs> sorry it's not what i want to talk about but um I have experienced the disappointment. I definitely did. I felt that with the first guy that the Lord um, revealed to me was my husband. And I was so, um, honestly, I'm going to say it was that spirit that made me treat that guy the way that I did because I was very vain at the time. This was in 2013. I was very vain. I was angry because God didn't give me what I asked for. You know, I wanted him to look a certain way. He didn't look that way. But when it came down to personality and like, loving me and being a sweet guy being there for me like seeing what was wrong with me and he just didn't care like all of that was perfect <laughs> everything was perfect he was even like a soulmate to me the only thing that was not perfect to me which was the most important thing to me at that time was his physical appearance and that was literally the only reason that I did not he was shorter than me he was a little bit older than me which I didn't mind because I like older guys anyway but he just didn't look how I wanted him to look <laughs> and um it was bearing witness with me that he was my husband and everything and we were getting like signs and confirmations and he I won't say he loved me he he liked me a lot he told me specifically that he prayed for God to send him a wife like me wanting her to be bold and outspoken and not afraid to you know share the truth and beautiful blah 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 and I was like okay and I would just think to myself like well I didn't get what I asked for <laughs> you know? but um 
I broke that guy's heart. I was so mean to him. And I do believe it was that Jezebel spirit. It was that spirit that I was dealing with. And um, I just didn't want to marry him. I didn't want to, I didn't want to accept that that was the man that God chose for me because he didn't look the way it was very immature. It was, it was extremely immature mindset. I mean, but it was that spirit too, because that's what that spirit does. And a lot of y'all women, I don't want to talk about like the Jezebel spirit a lot. I've talked about that spirit a great deal, which the Lord may actually use me to talk about it a little bit more because he's, he's still teaching me on that spirit. But one thing I can say that Jezebel definitely does is it destroys marriages and not just from the outside in, from the inside out. That spirit can have you as a woman look at your husband in like the most disgusting light and you think it's you, but it's really not you. You know, God probably could have sent you somebody that, that was really going to love you, really going to care about you. And that spirit can find a way, honey, especially if it's already in that woman's like mind and their mind isn't renewed yet, which is very, very hard. <laughs> just just speaking from being on that side, dealing with that spirit. Um, It's amazing what that spirit can do. I don't want to glorify the Jezebel spirit, but that spirit can have you like turn your heart to stone and have you reject like gold. I'm serious. You know, true men of God who are like actually sons, you know, God's not going to send you crap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If he's going to send you his sons, they're, they're one of his princes, you know? So that's what that was. That's what happened with that. And, um, just another God of the Lord uh, gave me a second chance with, which I told y'all about. That was my last one. He, um, I found something wrong with him. And honestly, it was just that spirit on me. And the Lord kept trying to show me that in dreams that it's that Jezebel spirit. That spirit is like you're running the husbands away. It is sometimes it's not even what you're doing. It's just that spirit can like it can it can kind of it manipulates how you perceive things, how you perceive people. You know, you don't see it as God trying to give you a gift. You see it as, oh, I don't want this and this is wrong with them and I want this and that's what I was doing the whole time. So I found something wrong with that guy, <laughs> you know? And it's it's just this pattern of I don't receive or I don't want to accept what God's choice. A lot of Christians do that, not just me. People I've talked to <laughs> and other Christians out there, I know y'all are like that. Y'all got a list, honey. Y'all done put what you want the woman to look like and be like. And some of y'all, y'all just want a straight Proverbs 31 woman. Some of y'all say that. I've talked to some brothers. I'm like, well, what kind of woman do you want? You know, because I would get excited. We would just be joking about it. And I would tell them how I have a list, you know. And they'll be like, well, I don't really have a list. I just want a Proverbs 31 woman, you know. And I'm like, oh, that's boring. Like, spice it up a little bit, <laughs> you know. Like, where's the creativity? You know, no, no details or anything. But everybody has a list. And, um... You have your heart set on one kind of person, or I'm going to say expectations of what you're expecting the one to be like. And I'm not going to say God doesn't do it. I believe God does what he wants to do. That's my motto. God can do what he wants to do when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. That's why I said, if he give you everything that you put on that list, well, praise God. I just pray it don't become an idol. But I've noticed that with him, he doesn't. He doesn't always give you everything because marriage, I think I said this in like older videos, but marriage is like the main tool that God likes to use to sanctify his children. So that goes without saying that your spouse is going to purposely have some things that's going to challenge you because there's some things in you that God has to pull out of you through your spouse. And a lot of Christians, I feel like, you know why a lot of God ordained marriages don't work out? They either never get married if they, God put them together, they never get married or they did get married and they get divorced because Christians came into it. They came into God's will together with certain expectations that were not realistic. Like guys, they want the Proverbs 31 woman. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, you may find some women who is actually all of that like down pack and praise God to that sister. Like <laughs> I give it to her if she's out there somewhere, but when you're dealing with God's daughters, like, I think we forget, we get so hooked on what kind of man and woman of God that we want when it comes to marriage that you forget that we are all still being sanctified. Everybody got something wrong with them. You know, I mean, there's some beautiful things that God can put in his children. Like, I mean, I've seen some beautiful, I mean, beautiful, and I can see people's spirit. I'm not talking about just physical appearance. I mean, I've met some brothers in the Lord that I was friends with. They were just beautiful, anointed. I mean, articulate, 
wisdom, just the Holy Spirit. Like, I love that, <laughs> you know, and I, I've seen it. And it's like, we really are like so many different variations of God. It's beautiful how he does that, how he can just emulate himself or emanate his character through our little filters, you know, our personality and our characteristics. And you just see God pop out in all these different types of people. And it's, it's beautiful. But um, I got to know those people. And I saw, you know, eventually um, as just being their friend or their sister, that they were just a normal human being, just like me. They still have flaws. And when I was really under a, um, really under a critical spirit, at that time, I would see those flaws and it would kind of like make me want to fall back away from the person because like I looked up to them so much. But when I started seeing, you know, oh, they have a little pride here or he's kind of mean or he struggles with lust, you know, it's just just the little things here and there. You start looking at the person differently and um, all of a sudden they don't shine as bright as they did in your eyes before. <laughs> and I really wanted to make a video about that because. I've had this like discussion with so many different people and actually one brother in particular who I was really, really close friends with, he kept dating like different Christian girls and he already knows like my views on it. I feel like, you know, you shouldn't be dating at all. I feel like God's going to let you know who your spouse is and you just kind of go from there, be led from the Holy Spirit, you know, from there. But he would just date like different Christian girls and <laughs> me and him would be talking. He's such a sweetheart, but he would always tell me like something's wrong with the girl. Like, Oh, she has an attitude or, you know, this one is kind of, um, the first one had an attitude. The next one was just kind of really insecure, really, you know, uh, needy and just, um, uh, didn't really trust him yet. And the next, I'm just like, and I would just tell him like, well, if you say she's sweet and she's all those good things, there has to be a reason why you're with her. So why, why do you run away every time you see something wrong with her? You know? And um, I got extra sensitive about it. And I feel like he needed to hear it. <laughs> I kind of miss him a little bit. But because I have experienced that, you know, not just with different guys, but even from like high school, you know, not just with different guys, but just friendships, you know, people, they do that. I say that all the time. And that's not even just with ministry. That's just the, that's just the real world. You know, people, they see something they like about you or they expect you to be a certain way. And then like when they really start to see like, I want to say the complete you. Because that's the problem. We don't see the complete person. That's all we have. We see in part. We fall in love with the part that we see. But when God unveils the rest, you want to run away. <laughs> or you want to stop talking to them and being their friend or whatever. But, um, yeah, I was, I just, I, it was amazing to me. I couldn't understand how he wasn't getting it because I looked up to him. And he probably didn't know that. But I, I consider him um, one of the brothers that are that I've met or encountered as a Christian is beautiful he's the only guy maybe i want to say the only guy no I've, I've met more they gonna get mad if they see that <laughs> i've met more but he's he's definitely one at the top of the list that i could honestly say is very sweet he's very compassionate his love is genuine and if he can deal with me honey like he got some points <laughs> on him as a friend but i didn't see how he wasn't getting it because i'm like well I was like, whatever happened, you know, to the, the unconditional love part of things, you know, and a lot of guys, they do that because they're looking for like a particular woman. Like I said, you forget, you know, that we're, we're still all in the process of sanctification. There's going to be something wrong. Nobody's that perfect. And if you think they are, something's wrong. <laughs> okay. I don't want to like throw no names out here, or, like throw no kind of shade, but one of the guys in particular that I did have a word of marriage with, um, that guy was like golden in my eyes. And when the Lord started showing me some stuff about him that he struggled with, I mean, it kind of made sense. The Lord didn't show me all at once because he knew it would have hurt me. But, but I mean, like I said, it just goes without showing. God does that purposely. You know, God doesn't make any mistakes. It's not like, oh, yeah, by the way, that's your wife. I forgot to tell you that she has a really bad attitude. <laughs> Oh, yeah, like that's your husband, but he's he's struggling with lust right now. He needs mad deliverance. You know, it's not one of those, oops, my bad. You know, God's not stupid. He does it purposely because he has to cultivate in us and he has to work in us to pull that stuff out of you. Let's say your husband is, um, I say lust because that's usually like the most common things when it comes to guys. Your husband has like a stronghold of lust or God tells you this guy's your husband, but he's like a mad hoe right now. Like he's not even saved yet. And I've had sisters come to me like, well, how do I know if it's God? Because, you know, it's, it's, is he, can he send you to your husband if he's not like saved? Or, no, he can. He can and he will. 
But that's why I said be led by the Holy Spirit, because God may use you for that guy's spiritual maturity. So um, the guy could be like just a serious hoe. He does not want to be in a relationship. But God told you that person is your husband. And you're just kind of like looking over the list like, <laughs> no, that's not the one, you know. And God's like, no, that's him. That's him. You know, but um, I think I said this in my um, the two videos I made where I feel sorry for you. And I was talking about the guys and stuff. And I was saying how men, I really do 100% believe that men are meant to be with a wife. Every single man. I think God may give um, may give some men grace. Like the Apostle Paul, he was never married. And uh, Paul actually talked about that in his letters where he said, I wish that some of you could be as I am. He had a gift of, of just singleness. I think God does give some men the grace to be able to attain that, to just or obtain a life, a lifestyle of singleness. But do I think it was supposed to be that way from the beginning? No, I don't. I do think that everyone should have a mate. It's clear. It's in Genesis. <laughs> you need a help mate. But um, yeah, I think I said in that video how, you know, the same way a man can like turn his nose up at you because he doesn't feel you're the Proverbs 31 woman or which I'm sorry. Like I, I, I've read Proverbs 31 and please don't take this the wrong way. I've read it and I see what kind of woman that Proverbs 31 talks about. And I think it's I think it's a very simple visual of a woman of God. Like there's really no details. I mean, go go and read it. Y'all see what I'm talking about? Because like I can't stand Christian cliches like every guy be like. Oh, I want my Proverbs 31 woman. I want my Proverbs 31. And then the girls be like, I want my Boaz. I'm just like, have y'all even read these scriptures? Like, they're really not that interesting. I, I'm wondering, is that just me? Like, go read Proverbs 31. I've read it like so many times. And I'm like, I see where those qualities are like very important. I believe that God put them there for a reason. I think that's what we should be um, aspiring to be to some degree. But uh. <sighs> Maybe people just kind of visualize the woman differently. When I read Proverbs 31, I just didn't see any. <laughs> this is going to sound so bad. There was just no creativity to it. I mean, for the way that Christians hype it up is what I'm saying. I think there's a lot of passages in scripture in reference to marriage and people who got married in the Bible that Christians make like the the perfect ideal, like, you know, um, what you should want. And I don't get it because I'm like. There was really nothing special about Boaz, but yet people, like, they use that story and they put it on a pedestal, like, oh, I'm looking for my Boaz. Like, he kind of just helped the chick out. I mean, he didn't, it wasn't really, like, romantic, but that's what I'm saying about Proverbs 31. I think Proverbs 31, I think those are qualities a woman of God should have. Do I think that every woman of God is like that? No, because I think Solomon could have easily taken my characteristics or something amazing about me, something amazing about you women out there. And he could have put that in there too, but I don't think that every woman is supposed to be like exactly, don't say it like that. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I think the qualities, I think, I think the passage was talking about qualities that a woman should have. I can't say, I think that men Christian men, they're kind of ignorant a little bit when it comes to that, because it's like when they read Proverbs 31, the first mistake they make is thinking that they're going to find a woman who's already like that. And if she is, like I said, praise God, I'll go to God, you know, high five to that sister. But yeah, they're already expecting a woman to be like that or because for some reason, I mean, honestly, I don't even think Proverbs 31 is the only passage that you should read. As far as standards for a wife goes, I mean, you can read Esther for that. I think Esther is a little bit more in the groove, you know, you can see Esther's qualities and her anointing, you know, just what God used her for over the, the Proverbs 31. I mean, it's, it's kind of all over the Bible, but I do feel like men, they make a mistake when they do that because <clears throat> as, as a standard, I, I would say as, as a standard, because if you start looking for somebody like that, I feel like you could miss all the other things that that passage is not saying that's in this woman of God that's right in front of you you know so <sighs> but no like the same way men do that they'll kind of turn their their noses down at um different sisters in the Lord when it comes to like you know trying to find a mate or something is they feel like she's not up to par but we do it too you know, and I, I think women are probably a little bit more harsh with it because, you know, we not only want the physical 
down but we like oh i want him to be wise so he gotta be you know he gotta be articulate he gotta have all the word of knowledge the word of wisdom to get the faith <laughs> he gotta have prophecy he gotta have oh he gotta be just really passionate about god he gotta be a weeper i want him to be a weep he gonna weep for me okay he gotta be an intercessor he gotta know how to pray for three hours you know like we be writing stuff like that so i do think we a little bit more harsh with it and then like when god sends the guy or some of y'all are actually out there looking you're dating which i said i don't agree with but i'm not gonna be judging people for that but yeah we do that and it's i think that's all the more reason you should wait for god to send you your spouse because that way you can trust his choice and not yours because a lot of the things that we want in people, number one, it's a misunderstanding of the scriptures. You don't even really know what you want. And I can honestly say that. I think I think some Christian men know what they want when it comes to seeking a spouse. But for those who don't really know what, what they should want, I think they run to Proverbs uh, 31, which I said, like I said, those are good qualities for women to have. But every woman's not going to be that Proverbs 31 woman. You know, there, there's everybody has their own personality. Everybody's completely different. And at the end of the day, it's all about you denying yourself so that Christ can be made manifest through you. So no, every woman's not going to be like the woman that you're reading about, but you will. I think God can promise you that he'll send you one of his daughters and who actually loves him, who actually has a heart for him, who he's, you know, constantly working on. And you're going to see him through her. She's going to be beautiful because you see him in her. But if you're always expecting her to be like a Proverbs 30, like I said, like you can read, when I read that passage, I just thought of somebody who was very like, I don't even want to say it because it's just going to sound, it's not going to sound right. <laughs> I'm just saying, I think everybody can have their own kind of visualization when they read that. But um, every woman has their own personality. Everybody's different. You know, God uses us all for different things. We all have different spiritual gifts. Um. And we're all just one body together. So I think what people should really want, I think they're I think they're misreading passages when it comes to marriage and they don't really have a complete understanding of what they should want. What you should want is God in somebody. Okay. Don't worry about her being and I'm gonna say this, I feel like it needs to be said because I'm tired of hearing, oh, I want a problem straight one, I want a problem straight one. That's great. God put that in there. That's beautiful. But honey, that's not the only book in the Bible where you can see beautiful women of God who God used like tremendously, you know, you know, like, um, I think, I think because, you know, guys, they run to that passage so much. I think that they would probably look for that over somebody who came from like being a hoe. What about Mary Magdalene? You know, what about her? Like, <laughs> wait, what about these women? Let's kind of, let's skip Proverbs 31 and let's go look at Mary Magdalene who, was forgiven by Jesus. You know, she wouldn't worth crap, was in the dirt, was in adultery, had what, six, seven devils, I think the scripture says. And Jesus came anyway, and he still bestowed, you know, bestowed grace and mercy upon her. And that's what actually changed her. She felt that love. I consider Mary Magdalene, I'm team Mary Magdalene. I'm sorry. Okay, y'all can keep the Proverbs 31. I'm the team Mary Magdalene because she represents those of us who are a hot mess and who need the love of God. <laughs> okay. God is going to branch out to all of his daughters, not just the Proverbs 31 daughters, but you're going to get your Mary Magdalene's, you're going to have your Esther's, you're going to have the, all the other women that I ain't read about yet, so I ain't going to try to say them names, <laughs> but y'all know what I'm saying. Mary Magdalene, she, um, she was demonized, you know, she had a lot of, she's an adultery, you know, she was sexually immoral, she was sexually defiled, she wasn't worth nothing, she was about to get stoned, and here comes a sweet prince, and he's like, Go and sin no more. He forgives her. And you know what, what actually changed her in here? That was that love that she felt. That's what a lot of us Jezebels need. And I don't want to call us Jezebels, but I'm so tired of like hearing like, and I've had guys tell me that like, you know, Brandy, you were just so, um, oh, they'll, they'll tell me all the good things about myself. Like, oh, you're just so anointed. Oh, you're so beautiful. I just love your personality, but you're really, really mean. I'm like, okay, thank you. Like, <laughs> I was like, okay, well, let's talk about what's wrong with you. You know, it's kind of like, it, it really did kind of like, it discouraged me a little bit. But people, they'll do that. And I think a lot of it is just like a misunderstanding. But that's what Christian men do. Like I said, they're either taught what they should want in the faith, or they'll misread something like that, or they'll run to different passages. Because like I said, Christians make stuff like that a cliche. There's so many other different women in the Bible that Jesus made himself available to that he felt was worthy, not just the Proverbs 31 woman. 
your wife that God choose for you going to come from a lot of y'all's wives. I'm talking to y'all brothers out there. She going to come from so many different types of backgrounds, you know? And like I was saying in my video, <clears throat> for the women who feel like, you know, the, the guy that God chose for you, he isn't good enough or you feel like he's not worthy because I was struggling with that for the longest or I deserve better. This is not what I asked for. God, I think you should consider it an honor. It's a compliment that God would take something beautiful and, you know, put some, put it with something that's maybe not too great yet, not too well put together or maybe kind of messed up inside because God knows that what's in you can help that person heal, can restore that person and vice versa. And I wish a lot of Christian men could see it that way. And I want to tear that down. I'm so sorry. Like, I have to. I have to tear this down. Stop saying that you just want a Proverbs 31 woman. Because God may not send your wife to you in a Proverbs 31 state. And that's what's wrong with y'all. Y'all's minds are so, like, fixated on, no, this one. I just want this. Okay, well, when she come with all them flaws and that God needs you to help kind of get them kinks out of her and kind of love her back to health, you ain't going to even want to receive the girl because you want a Proverbs 31. <laughs> you know, like, she'll, she'll become that eventually, but... No, you know, and I, I've said that so many times in my videos, God does not always send you perfect people. That's a lot of, that's another reason why Christians are not married yet. We keep expecting like the perfect guy. Oh, it has to be the perfect girl. Like they may have the perfect gifts and the perfect seed, <laughs> but they, they're not Mr. and Mrs. Perfect just yet. But that's what's wrong. You have Christians who actually do have a close relationship with the Lord God has actually revealed their spouse to them, but because they have, they already have their minds made up of or their expectations of what they kind of wanted God to give them, and that's not what God gave them. They either reject the person, and the God sends them another, which is exactly what I did. I kept rejecting and rejecting. I'm like, nope, this was wrong with him. Nope, I don't like him. He's not funny. Let the next one be. You know, I just, I just kept doing that. Now, I, now I'm just kind of to the point. I see the Lord just, that's not how he plays. Like, you need to deny yourself, <laughs> okay? This is not how the game goes. God purposely sends you people that are messed up for a reason. And it's beautiful. On one side of it, it's a compliment that he chose you to help that person become what he wants them to be. That means that you, and I say only you, yes, God can easily, you know, send you somebody else, or maybe he could rearrange the situation if he wanted to, but I believe that the Holy Spirit is what activates God ordained marriages. So when I say that you're the only one, that means that God saw you as the only one because he's the one who said that you're the one. you the wife for him. You're the husband for her. She needs you. He needs you. Okay. So you are the only one in this equation, as far as God is concerned so far, that is able to give this man or give this woman what they need in order for them to become a better person. So if all you keep seeing as a Christian man, as a Christian woman is what's wrong with them, you can't see what's wrong with you. It's kind of how Jesus said, you know, he said, you hypocrite. You know, when it comes to judging people, take the log out of your own eye first so you can see clearly. He wasn't saying that to be ugly, but a lot of the times we have a lot of filters on our mind or um, on our eyes. And it's, it's not God's heart. It's not the way God sees things. We don't think the way God does and we should, but we don't. So he says, pull the log out first and then you'll see clearly. The log could be that all you see is what's wrong with her excuse me, or all you see is what's wrong with him or what he's not, what she's not, what she's not. Oh, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. This needs to be changed. This needs to be changed. If that's all you keep seeing and you can't see God's plan behind this union together, you can't see what God is putting you that can help this person be who he wants them to be. Or maybe you can see what their potential is, but you know that you need to be there in that equation to help that come into fruition. That's what you need to be seeing. Seeing clearly is seeing the way that God sees. A lot of Christians don't see the way God sees when it comes to finding a mate at all. I've done it myself. This headband keeps falling. See, this is a flaw right here. <laughs> this is a flaw. Because my head kind of small. Hold on. You would think it'd be fitting because my head is so big. But I got it braided under here. So it's kind of. It's not working out too good, but <laughs> no, um, <sighs> yeah, we, we don't see the way he sees when it comes to relationships. And that's why you have a lot of Christians. They keep dating. You, you see that, don't you? That, that same Christian guy, that same Christian chick, they just keep dating like different people, different people. 
and I know some of y'all may disagree. I understand people catch up a little bit late with stuff. God may show reveal stuff to people at a, a different time, but he's already revealed to me that he does not want us dating. Like, period. There's no dating. You don't need to date. God don't need your help choosing your spouse. He'll send them to you. He'll reveal to you who your spouse is. But I mean, and that to me, I feel like if Christians are dating like that and you keep going through these different people, that should show you that you you're not in a position to judge with who you should be with. You don't know what you need. If you did, you wouldn't keep popping around all over the place. I know some of y'all don't get an attitude with me saying that, but it's the truth. If your relationship was really God putting y'all together, because that's what all the Christians say. Oh, God sent me this person. They're really by... God didn't send you that person. You chose that person. Just because y'all Christians does not mean that God has ordained that relationship. That was you. Okay. And then when they break up, it's like, well, what happened to the whole, I've seen it. Like they were just punny, put, had it all online. Like, oh, God's love story. And they taking pictures and they doing all of this. And <laughs> it's like, it wasn't God. It was you. And now they're in a relationship with somebody else. You know, like that never happened. But I think that should show us. I think a lot of people are genuine and they're seeking for a spouse. You know, they probably don't really know about the whole dating thing. They probably don't have the grace to know yet that you don't have to date. You can literally just tell the Lord what you want. Um, <clears throat> you can make a list if you want to. But I think you should just accept that God's going to give you. He's going to read that list and he's going to consider, you know, your heart's desires. But he's going to give you what you need and what he feels is best for you. And you don't have to like, you don't have to, you know, um, burden yourself or trying to find somebody like leave that in God's hands. There's rest in that. I don't think dating is resting. I think it's a constant seeking, like just chill, you know, <laughs> like tell God what you want, make it, you know, make him aware of it and just leave it in his hands and surrender that desire. You know, when it happens, how it happens, leave it up to him. And then when he reveals that person to you or he sends or brings the person to you, just go from there. But um, <clears throat> spouse picking is not a human's business. It's God's business. And I mean, I, you see that in Genesis. I don't I don't believe in dating. I think dating is worldly, is carnal. Um, I think it, it goes against everything that we are supposed to be following in the Bible. When it talks about uh, don't lean onto your own understanding. Well, in order for me to go find somebody to marry, that's me leaning onto my own understanding, unless I'm letting the Holy Spirit lead me, which that's different. That's God choosing. But people don't let God choose. And this is why um this is why the whole word of marriage thing is so taboo. It's taboo because you don't have Christians who give God a chance to choose their spouse for them. That's why you don't have a lot of testimonies of people, Christians who actually got put together by God. They don't wait. They don't wait on God. They either don't go to God 